Hello everyone, uh, this recording is for my advanced topics in Compilers class. This video relies on Noel, a software infrastructure designed to accelerate compiler research in code analysis and transformation. This video is an introduction to the software Noel, rather than the concepts built in Noel. For the latter, uh, please watch my other video link below, which was presented at the CGO conference in 2022. Uh, so this talk is organized in three parts. After describing the code structure of Noel, uh, we'll look at how to build a simple code analysis and transformation using Noel. Uh, then we're going to look at how to develop inside Noel. Uh, for example, if you want to extend an abstraction already provided by Noel or to add a new abstraction. Um, so the, the Noel is open source, is um, uh, distributed on GitHub. Uh, you need to use LRDM 9.0.0, exactly that version. Um, and uh, if, if you are at Northwestern, then you can use the, any teaching, um, uh, any uh, machine in the teaching lab, uh, for example, hand-on. And to do that, you have to change your environment to add LRDM 9 uh, in it. So that those are the, uh, here, the command line to run. Uh, and and instead, if you are if you are doing research with me, uh, then it means you have access to our cluster called Zitos. The login is Peroni, and in that case, you just have to source the enable file uh, that you see here. And that's it. Uh, okay, so I would say uh, try to compile the framework and see how that goes, and let me know uh, how you can do it. Well, first you clone the repository, uh, then you go inside the directory. Um, of, of the uh, infrastructure, so Noel, and you run make, and that's it. And everything should work fine. Uh, now, uh, what is Noel and why do we need it? So this is a, a large project that has been done at, uh, in together with uh, my group, as well as Professor David August's group at Princeton. Uh, we, we started this project in uh, very uh, almost at the beginning of my tenure track career here at Northwestern, um, and and Noel came out of my uh, uh, need that I had during my postdoc when I was developing together with my collaborator Helix a paralyzing compiler. Okay, so so LLVM is a is a, a fantastic infrastructure. Uh, I. Uh, I really love uh, working inside Noel, inside LLVM, and extend it and and uh, and, and rely on it. Um, so it's very good at many things. However, if you want to do research in code analysis and transformation, then you're probably familiar with the LLVM IR, and you're probably familiar with the LLVM API that you can rely on. Now, the problem of this API and abstractions provided by LLVM is that they are uh, fairly low level and they are only code-centric. Um, what does it mean, code-centric? It means that the code is first-class citizen there. So you have the concept of instruction, of busy block, of function. Uh, you have an abstraction called loop, and, and it's all about code, which is great for many things, but is not enough. Um, so so uh, uh, sometimes when you have to do advanced code analysis and transformation because you're doing research in this, uh, in this area, Example, then uh, if you're uh, doing some very advanced transformation like some fancy uh, vectorization or parallelization, then using code centric API at the very low level is, is quite hard to do that. So that's where um, my problems were during my postdoc that uh, slowed me down doing research. So, so when I started my tenure track uh, career, I decided to take a step back and try to understand the bug, why it took me so long to build Helix and try to fix it for me and for everybody that, that has the same problem. So the solution is Noel. So Noel complements LLVM. It doesn't hide it. It doesn't hide the API of LLVM. It just complements it. And it complements it by providing a dependence-centric APIs at different granularities for code analysis and transformation you build in the middle end uh, in LLVM. Uh, so, in, when you have Noel uh, in your toolkit, now you can implement uh, even advanced code transformations, let's say a whole paralyzing compiler, in less than a thousand lines of code. 
um, the uh, no API are optional, so you don't have to use them. And you can combine them with LLVM API. So uh, I really like to, as a researcher and developer, I really like writing code and I write a lot of code every day. And I like to have degrees of freedom or options. So if I, if my transformation needs a code-centric API, I'm going to use LLVM. If instead use a, it needs a dependence-centric API, I use Noel. And I like to use both of them even in the same pass. Uh, I, I tend to try to at least the transformations and that I am more interested tend to uh, prefer dependent-centric view of the computation and therefore I typically use mostly Noel API, but sometimes you also need LLVM API. Okay, so for uh, the great majority of Noel API and in the long run is going to be all API of Noel, uh, you pay the cost of using this API only when you use them. So this API uh, provide information about dependencies of the code. And of course, those are not first class citizen in LLVM IR, which means that you have to compute them, these dependencies, this information, these properties. And, and that is a cost uh, in terms of computation time. So when you use Noel and you ask for a specific view, uh, dependent-centric view of the code of a, a certain code region, for example, of a loop, now you pay the cost of computing that property only when you ask for it. So in this way, Noel has this uh, pay-as-you-go type of model. Uh, so uh, yeah. Uh, now, uh, current limitations of Noel um, from an engineering point of view, from engineering reasons point of view, uh, is that you can analyze and transform a program, but not the library. Uh, this is what it means. It means that the Noel infrastructure assumes you have the function main in your IR. So when you invoke Noel on an IR, it, main is assumed to exist. Uh, and and uh, yeah, uh, the whole program is also assumed to be in that IR. Now here, what I mean is. Uh, you're not going to take another IR and link it, in, in link it inside the current IR after you run Noel. Okay? However, you can take your program and slice it in multiple external libraries compiled with separate compilation toolchain and keep them separate and have this, the slice of the program into the IR and optimize that. You can do that. But after you optimize that IR with Noel, the assumption is that you take the optimized IR, you lower it down in assembly, and then you link that assembly with the whatever library in assembly that you have. Okay. That's what is assumed. Um, the, the IR um, is uh, analyzed and transformed um, uh, using Noel when you invoke, uh, when you ask Noel to have access to a certain dependent centric abstraction or you want to use a dependent centric API to transform the code. Um, and but when you do that, Noel assumes that your IR uh, is normalized and Noel provides several normalizations, several code norm normalizations. The, 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 most in, the, the least invasive one is Noel norm. So at the very least, you have to take the IR, let's say generated by the front end, for example, by Clang or, or, or by Rust or whatever front end you have, you take that IR and you have to, before you invoke Noel, uh, in what I mean, before you invoke the pass you build on top of an LVM that depends on Noel infrastructure, before you do that, you have to take that IR and normalize it with at least the common line Noel norm, which is provided by Noel. Um, and, and also another limitation is that you as a user of Noel, he, uh, you are responsible to keep track of the abstractions you ask Noel uh, 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 in the past and you they're no longer valid because maybe, maybe you change the code and now the abstraction that capture a property of the code no longer match the current state of the code and it, you are in charge to decide when that invalidation of the abstraction happen uh, and, and probably you have to use your transformation specific knowledge to know that. And, and so you're in charge to understand that and, and therefore you are in charge to decide when to destroy the abstraction 
that is no longer valid and perhaps ask Noel to build a new one with the new code, that's fine. But uh, so you are in charge to, to keep track of that. Uh, so my suggestion is that the way I, I typically uh, build up on, uh, on top of Noel is that I, at the beginning, I ask all abstractions I need to do my transformation. And then I, I, keep tr I, I keep track of every changes I want to do into the code using these abstractions or, uh, um, and directly or indirectly. And then I'm going to, and after I do this, and therefore at this point I didn't touch the IR yet, but I know how to t touch it now. Then I, I, um, I, I do all changes at once which means I basically invalidated all the abstractions very likely, uh, but that's fine. And, and, uh, and if I need, if my algorithms require an, ad an adaptive scheme where, for example, I use the abstraction to decide what to change, then I do the changes, and then these changes might trigger new changes. So I need to go back and redo everything from scratch until, let's say, a fixed point is reached. Then in that case, you can, I, I rely on invoking Noel multiple times um, uh, because this is a common pattern uh, for very advanced transformations. Uh, um, then we build a tool called Noel Fixed Point, which has exactly that semantic for you. You don't have to keep track of that. You don't have to uh, uh, write any code to understand whether you reach a fixed point or not, and you just use that tool. Okay? And, Later on, subsequent uh, uh, talks, uh, I will describe exactly how to do that. Okay, let's jump into the structure of Noel. Uh, so if you download it, this is the structure you're gonna see, uh, uh, besides a few files, but uh, the, the, the semantics of this directory is the following. Under examples, you have a very simple LLVM passes that show how to use Noel in a relatively simple way. It's like showcases for how to use abstractions, dependent-centric abstractions provided by Noel. Under source, you have Noel. The, literally, the, the, what we have been called Noel is everything is under source. And then we have a very rich set of tests uh, that uh, test specific tools we built upon Noel and, and, and uh, and, and by testing these tools that optimize the code, we are testing also the abstractions that Noel provide. Okay. And on top of that, we also have unit tests that test specifically the single abstraction that um, Noel provide. After you run make, uh, in, uh, so you, you download Noel from GitHub, you run make, so you compile the whole infrastructure. At that point, you have a new subdirectory called install where all the installation of the compiled Noel is are stored into, uh, including the, um, uh, the, all the command line that you can now invoke uh, uh, that Noel provide. Okay. So here you have binaries you can invoke. For example, in Noel we built a paralyzing compiler. You can invoke it to paralyze a program. Uh, we also have, of course, the headers of the public APIs for all abstractions that Noel provide. And we have a bunch of other tools you can use to build your own, to build and customize your all your own compilation pipeline, compilation and optimization pipeline. Okay, so let's jump in into the core of the infrastructure, which is source. So if you go on inside source, you have a make file that is invoked by the um, uh, outermost make file, and you have uh, uh, the two most important directories are core and tools. Core includes all abstractions that Noel provide, and of course their public APIs. So you can think about Noel to be a bunch of libraries, which each this library provide abstractions that are that complement what LLVM provides. And, and all of those are under core. And under tools instead, they are uh, there are tools, code optimizations, code analysis that we built on top of Noel, uh, so on top of the abstractions provided inside the subdirectory core. So if you instead go under examples, you have uh, uh, some examples of LLVM passes that use Noel, and, and those are relatively simple passes to invoke Noel abstraction and API. And under tests are a relatively simple C and C++ program that you can now uh, um, uh, used to test these simple passes just to have a sense of 
how these nonance abstractions behave on some real code, some some C and C plus plus program. They say those are very simple programs. They're not they're not uh, they, they're not meant to represent uh, any code pattern that you can see in the wild. Okay, that's it about the code structure of Noel. Um, in, now let's jump in into okay now we have this thing called Noel how how can we use it to do research in code analysis and transformation that's the main purpose of Noel okay so I in Northwestern I teach another class called uh, 323 code analysis and transformation where I I, I, uh, I teach uh, concepts and and uh, way to implement these concepts and how to leverage them to do uh, code analysis and transformation that are available in modern uh, production compilers. Uh, so we use LLVM in that class. In that class, if you took that class, you know that this is the, the code that you uh, I, I wrote for you <clears throat> that is on my GitHub page, which is the, I call LLVM middle end template, uh, which is a template to write a, a, a pass in LLVM for the middle end to do a code analysis and transformation of the IR, for example. Okay. So I'm not going to explain the detail of this because I assume you have taken my 323 class since you are in my advanced class. Okay. Uh, by the way, if you don't remember these aspects, then please go to my website in the uh, um, in the web page for the code analysis and transformation. All the materials is there, so you can use that to refresh your memory. Uh, so besides these three functions that are invoked to do your analysis and transformation, you have to include some LLVM headers and you use the namespace LLVM. Then at the bottom of this file, you have the boilerplate code to uh, register your pass to the pass manager of LLVM. Uh, because we are using LLVM 9 uh, for Noel, this code is, um, refers to the pass man to the what is called the old or the legacy pass manager in LLVM. Uh, if you take uh, um, a more up-to-date LLVM infrastructure, let's say LLVM uh, 14, then you have two pass managers. Uh, this one refers to the legacy one. Okay, good. So this is if you want to build an LLVM pass, that's the only thing you have to do. So it's very simple, uh, very nice. Uh, now, but now, uh, instead of just building something that relies only on LLVM API, we want to build something like a code analysis transformation that relies both on LLVM API and on Noel API. How can we do it? The changes are very minimal compared to the previous, uh, to the classical way of building an LLVM pass. So first of all, the only thing you have to do is that you include the Noel header. That's it. So uh, you include Noel core Noel.hpp. This is the top level header that uh, uh, provide the, the, uh, um, the main API that Noel provide and using which you can access every abstraction that Noel provide uh, in perhaps multiple steps, but uh, yeah, it's the top level API. Then uh, inside your, so your pass has to be a module pass because again, the current limitation of Noel is that, or the assumption that Noel makes is you are optimizing a whole program. So therefore it's a module pass. Um, then uh, uh, as soon as you start the run on module, you fetch, uh, so okay, so, sorry. First of all, you have to declare that your pass depends on another pass that we called Noel. This is provided by the Noel infrastructure. So from LLVM point of view, LLVM see the Noel infrastructure to be a, a set of passes, one of which is uh, the Noel pass. So there is nothing more than that. LLVM doesn't see anything else but that. Okay? So therefore, because this API here is what LLVM used to, in particular the pass manager uses to understand the dependencies between the passes, your pass that relies on Noel API have to declare that your pass depends on the pass Noel that provides this API. Okay. Uh, then uh, inside your random model where you do your core analysis and transformation that you're interested to, to develop, you, you fetch Noel. And in using conventional LLVM API, there's nothing uh, unique about it. Um, and then you, at, the, at this point you have the object Noel. Using this object Noel, uh, which is the object that implements the past Noel, which provides every single abstraction that Noel provides, now you can use this to query Noel and ask for whatever you want. 
uh, like the easiest way is to say how many uh, instructions uh, exist in the whole model. Okay, this is a very silly in some sense API, but I developed this API with only one purpose to do this slide, <laughs> to basically show you a simple way to use Noel. Okay, and um, from this you can already see, and you're gonna see on my subsequent talks that a lot of these APIs uh, have, um, uh, what is unique about them is that first they're dependent centric or they heavily rely on the concept of dependencies or the information about dependencies between instructions or different co code granularity. And also they are program wide. So you, uh, or, or there are multi granularity. You can ask an abstraction and you can ask uh, that abstraction of a given code region that can be a single instruction, a single busy block, a single loop, but can even go up to the whole program. Okay? And, and uh, this allow you to do very advanced transformations that uh, might be very hard to do otherwise. Okay, so how, okay, let's say that you implemented that pass and you're done. Uh, let's say that you only wanted to print how many IR instructions exist in a program. Uh, how, how are you going to run? Uh, well, instead of invoking OPT, which is the common line you learn in my class 323 to invoke a, a, a code analysis transformation that you developed outside the, the, the source tree of an LVM. So instead of uh, in 323, you have invoked OPT, then minus load, the whatever is your path that you have installed, uh, like in this case, in my home directory, catlib, my path.so, and then you invoke your my pass and you apply your pass to this bit code and, and whatever is the new bit code that you have, the new IR you have uh, transformed and you have generated is gonna be stored into this file. Okay, so this is the conventional way to invoke an externally uh, developed and installed uh, LLVM middle end pass using an LLVM tool called OPT. Okay. This is the conventional way. Instead of doing that, we, you replace OPT with Noel load. That's it. Every single option you could have used in OPT, now you can use in Noel Load. Basically, Noel Load is a wrapper of OPT. And why is this a wrapper? It's because I was tired of declaring, of invoking a Noel-based uh, tool using OPT and listing all uh, shared libraries that Noel built internally and all their options. So I've wrapped them into Noel load and uh, Noel load, it will print the actual command line that invoke the OPT with all the options. So you can see what that would look like if you want to invoke OPT by, by yourself rather than Noel load. It's a long list, it's a very long list. Um, but then you will see that there is a bunch of shared libraries that are basically it passes or just uh, C++ classes. And, and then at the end, you have whatever you have passed as parameter to null load. In this case, you're asking uh, uh, load my pass and, and invoke my pass and apply it to this IR and generate the new IR called b.pc. Okay. So let's compile a simple example of code transformation built um, with using Noel and, and then we're gonna run it. So uh, let's go inside uh, one of the simple examples that we have in the Noel source stream. So under examples passes here you, have, you see a few of them. Uh, so go under this directory, run make links. What this does, it, it adds some links that is gonna help you to compile a given pass. Then you go inside a directory, which is a pass that you're interested to test, or to, to run, just to see, just to play with it. You go, and the, the, the one we have seen in the previous slide, the one that just print how many IAM instructions exist in a program is called simple. And so we go inside simple, and, and, and this is exactly the same code you see in the slide. You go inside there and you run this script, scripts slash run me, which what it does, it invokes CMake, it invokes uh, make, it compiles and it installs it in your home directory uh, and in the, in the directory called cat, code analysis transformation, which is the name of my other class 323. And uh, install, every, install your pass, uh, in this case, the simple pass right there. I know this is not ideal because I am, uh, uh, I am 
changing your state of your home directory, which nobody likes, I understand. I, I didn't have the time to install it locally. To, to change the script to install locally, I would do it in the future as an option, but it's just to make things simpler in some sense to test it. Okay, so, so now that we have compiled it, now we can run it. To run it, to run that pass, we have to apply that, uh, um, in this case, analysis, uh, to a, an IR. So that's why we have the subdirectory tests under examples as a few, in this case, eight C and C++ programs. So first you have to enable Noel. What that means is that you need to have all the tools that Noel has uh, provides uh, in your environment. Um, for example, the, the, the binary Noel load. You, you need to have it in your path. So to do that, you have to, uh, uh, when you compile Noel, uh, the compilation of Noel automatically generates a file, a text file called enable, uh, which is gonna be installed in the um, root of your of the Noel Git repository. By just sourcing that file, now you have the whole Noel infrastructure in your environment. This is, this is similar to the way, um, for example, I've seen a lot of packages in Red Hat works. It's, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's a little bit conventional. It's not, there's nothing uh, quite interesting about it. It's quite, in, it's quite common. Okay, so you go inside. Now that you have Noel in your environment, now you can go in one of these programs, let's say zero. Um, I, I'm really bad at giving names. <laughs> so I, you can see uh, with this. But like, um, so zero is the name of the AC, the first C and C++ program I developed to test Noel. Now you have a bunch of uh, make files inside to, to show how to invoke your, uh, the simple pass or a pass uh, built using Noel in many different ways. Um, the make file no profile is the make file that invoke Noel load to invoke um, whatever is the um, pass installed in the in your home directory slash cat. Uh, it invokes it without any profile information. So the IR has no profile information in it. Um, okay, so so uh, if you invoke it, uh, you're gonna see that first we are going to invoke the make file invoke clang to um, generate the single IR file that represent the whole program, which the whole program is is uh, is inside a single file uh, test.c right here. So from test.c by just using clang, nothing else. Uh, we generate a single layer file called test.bc. We disassemble it to have test.ll just to, if you are interested to look at the IR by yourself by hand. And then we normalize it. This is very important as we mentioned. If you don't normalize it, Noel uh, has no real systematic way to check if you have normalized the code. So if you don't normalize it, Noel assumes it is normalized it and you're gonna have a, undefined behavior basically on your code. So just remember to always normalize it. And Noel norm, it, it's another wrapper to OPT, so you can pass any options you have in OPT. So in this case, I say Noel norm, I want to normalize the file test.bc minus O, and I want to generate a new file that is now the normalized version of the original IR file, and I call it testNorm.bc. And, and that said, this now test norm.bc can be uh, used in a Noel infrastructure. Okay. And then there is a few other uh, command lines that are not really interesting. And then at the end, we actually invoke the pass we, have see, we see here in the slide. By using Noel load, we load the, the shared library, cat.so, we invoke it, minus cat, and then we apply it to a, an IR file, which is like test norm, but with some metadata attached to it. And uh, there are on my other talks, I'm gonna describe how to do that and what they are. But an example of metadata we generate is the dependencies. Depend uh, computing dependencies between instructions require a very expensive analysis called memory alias analysis. In our infrastructure, I think at this point, we have more than 30 alias analysis that work collaboratively to generate a very accurate dependence, a set of dependencies. And, and that because that is expensive, we have an, a, a way to, to uh, translate it into metadata inside the IR and embed it in it. 
So which means at this point, when you ask for anything related to dependencies, which is the majority of the abstractions that Noel provide, um, you don't have to compute the dependencies. They are right there. Okay. So, but anyway, this is a very, uh, that answer was, uh, was too long. Okay, so we take this, this IR and we, we, uh, we generate a new IR called testopt.bc. And the output is what you expect, is that the program has a certain number of instructions in this particular case, 22. And this is the total number of IR instructions for the whole program across all functions. Okay, uh, that was a very simple uh, and I hope intuitive way of using Noel. Uh, let's assume, so Noel provides uh, um, uh, a lot of API, a lot of abstractions and APIs, um, and and this is an active development, uh, an active project that we constantly develop daily. Uh, so, so the, the the number of abstractions is increasing, not as much as let's say two years ago, but it is in still increasing. Um, but let's say that w even if we have a lot of abstractions, let's say that those are not enough for you, or maybe. One abstraction that we have is not powerful enough for you. So you want to extend it. You want to extend Noel, not what you build on top of Noel, but Noel, the core itself. Mm -hmm. How are you going to do it? Okay, so this is how to do it. So you go under source. So now you have to modify the internals of Noel directly. So you go under source. And you go to, uh, if you go under core, there is uh, uh, one subdirectory per uh, set of abstractions that semantically belong together. Uh, let's say induction variables, for example. And um, now you go inside the specific abstraction you want to extend, you want to make it more powerful, for example. Or maybe you want to fix a bug that we are not aware of, and we are very grateful if you do. And please do a pull request after you do that. Uh, we, we would really appreciate it. Uh, okay, uh, now, uh, you you make the change, you make the abstractions more powerful, you make it more precise, you add the new abstraction, whatever. Then uh, uh, you want to test if it is correct, right? How are you going to test if it is correct? Well, you can use, uh, Noel provide a bunch of tools, optimizations, and also tools that allow you to do that. So, uh, under uh, uh, some of these tools, an example of a tool is, an, is the parallelizing compiler. So if you make, for example, if you uh, extend the induction variable model to capture more induction variables, uh, automatically uh, every tool that rely on that abstraction will get the benefit of your work. Uh, so the parallelizing compiler will parallelize better, hopefully better, your code. Okay, so all of these tools that are Side source slash tools, they are already installed in 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 your Noel uh, installation. So therefore, now you can run them on a bunch of tests and and see if everything still work as it's supposed to be. So under tests, you have a bunch of tests that allow you to do that. So if you go under test, you have um, regression, which is a, a very large set of tests um, that. Well, I don't know if it's relatively, relatively large for an academic settings, I would say. Uh, so so um, you have a bunch of tests that are used as seeds to generate even more tests by sweeping the different way of compiling and optimizing those tests. Okay. Changing loop and rolling before you apply a certain tool, for example. Okay. Ultimately, as of now, I think we generate something like 23,000 tests. And those are tests that uh, used to, uh, we've developed them because they used to have, they, they used to not work with Noel. So every time we find a bug of Noel, we, we follow the, the typical software engineering, good software engineering practice. You find a bug in Noel, we don't fix it. We create a test that highlight, that is as simple as possible, highlight the bug and then we add it to a regression test and we make sure we fail and then we fix the bug and 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 we put that in the regression test so here you see the, the history of bugs of noel basically under regression okay so here is everything is under regression 
Then we have unit tests. Here we test a specific module of Noel, so not, not an entire computation tool chain done by, for example, a paralyzing compiler, but just a, a single module of Noel. And, and then we have performance tests where here we are testing the speed up or the speed of the binary generated by a specific optimization we built on top of Noel. For example, the, uh, um, the, the uh, paralyzing compiler that we built on top of Noel. And the reason why we do that is, of course, because correctness is not enough. If we have a compiler, it's because we care about optimizations. Otherwise, we would have interpreters. And therefore, the optimizations, uh, I would claim, is the most important aspect of compilers. Therefore, because Noel focus on that aspect, we want to make sure that not only these optimizations are correct, but they actually optimize to the, the, the degree that we want. So at least we don't introduce a, a, a revert of the performance that we, that we were able to generate. OK. Uh, so how to run them? Uh, so here it depends. It depends if, you are, uh, um, if you have Condor, uh, these, these uh, uh, job dispatcher um, infrastructure, or not. So independently of that, you go under tests. And now, if you don't have Condor in your system, just run make. What this does is, is run all the tests without doing the sweep of all the different way of generating the IR of these tests. So you're not going to have 23,000 tests in the regression test, for example. But you run them all, but you run them also sequentially. And it's going to take a while. And plus, you're not even exploring all options. So, But this is what you can do if you don't have Condor. If you do have Condor, then uh, just run make Condor, and everything will be done automatically. Um, as I mentioned, as of this point, we have 23,000 regression tests, I think uh, roughly two dozens of performance tests, and maybe one or two dozens unit tests, I don't remember, something like that. Uh, now, if you do that, what Make Condor does is is generate um, all of these tests, uh, uh, describe generate the Condor file that describe every single test, submit them through Condor. It, it does literally everything automatically for you. In particular, if you go under tests, you will see that when you run Make Condor, you're gonna find a very large set of new subdirectories. That are, that are called regression and the score a number. That is a, a clone of the regression directory that has all the tests, but with a configuration inside that specify exactly how to generate the IR for this specific, uh, uh, for, for the tests, for all the tests. Um, and and, when you, and uh, different directories have different configurations. This is configurations related to how to generate the test, how to generate the IR of a test, but also related to um, uh, options of a given optimization tool that we are testing, like a parallelization, for example, a parallelizing compiler. Okay, all of them run in parallel. So if you have, let's say, if you are lucky, <laughs> so it's not like me, but if you are lucky and you get uh, an infrastructure with uh, 24,000 cores across many machines, of course, um, then your regression, your uh, make condor will take probably a few minutes to run all of them because all of them run in parallel. Um, I, we have, uh, I think I can run with our infrastructure around, I think it's 150 jobs simultaneously. And, and because of that, um, it takes roughly eight hours for me to run every single test uh, with our hardware capacity and, and check the state of them. Okay, uh, now how do you check the, taste, uh, the, the state of them? Uh, you go under tests and you run make Condor check if you have run the test with Condor. If you didn't run it with Condor, it, you're going to have the output in the terminal because everything runs sequentially, so, so you just have the output in the terminal and that's it. If you run it with Condor, everything running parallel, it's quite hard to uh, get the collective view of what the current state of every test. So make Condor check does exactly that. 
uh, it collect the current state of everything and it and give you a summary of everything. So in, in this case, for example, it says, uh, run, and you can run make condor check at any point in time. You, you don't have to wait, absolutely you don't have to wait until the end. Actually, it's designed to be run at any point in time so you can see the progress. So in this case, is giving you a summary. So there are three set of tests, regression tests, unit tests, performance tests. For each one, give a summary. So for the regression test, it says, oh, there have been submitted this number of jobs. Uh, right now, it's around 23,000. It grew since I made this slide. Um, and, and, and then it gives you something like, uh, uh, these are the tests that have not failed, not in any, confi in, in any configuration, didn't fail yet, uh, uh, but they, we know they should fail. Now, why this is important information is because um, if you have fixed a bug in Noel, uh, then you're gonna see uh, whether one of these tests will actually be fixed or not. Um, uh, if you are less lucky, let's say, if you introduce a bug in Noel, then, uh, which is honestly, this is the common case when you're developing, right? Bugs is, is something to embrace, uh, it's gonna be done. That's why we build an infrastructure to help debugging as much as we can. So uh, if you fail a test, now it, uh, when you run make condor check, it tells you exactly the test and which directory the test belongs to. What this means is that the test called memory interprocedural dependence failed, and the version of this test that failed is the one that has the specific configuration expressed into the subdirectory regression underscore 107. And this is the common line that is used. Now, because we have a lot of tests, it, it can take, consume a lot of disk space to keep them all uh, at, at a given point in time. And when you run a test, the test expand because you generate the IR, you optimize the IR, et cetera, et cetera. So the, the size grows while the tests run. Because of this, every test that, again, they run in parallel, when a test completed successfully, the test automatically delete itself to save disk space. Uh, and and um, instead, the tests that do not uh, succeed, so it, when a test fails, it doesn't delete itself, uh, and it generates a new script in that directory to allow you to rerun that test with a specific configuration. Okay? So uh, to reproduce it, you, you go in whatever is the directory that, of the test that failed, for example, uh, regression for simple, for example, or regression 107 memory interprocedural dependence, whatever is that directory that you see printed in Condor check. You go there and you're gonna find a new script that didn't exist before and now it does exist and it's called run underscore me dot sh. And inside there is all the code needed to reproduce that bug. So then you can, you don't have to rerun everything to test if you have fixed the bug or not. You can just go there, do your changes you have to do, and just run this specific configuration with this specific test until you fix it. Okay, good. Um, so, so let's say that you want, uh, let's say that you fix the bug and you want to, uh, all the tests finished and you want to retest everything just to make sure that everything is in good state. Uh, okay, you have to go in uh, um, tests, make sure there is no tests still running under your name, okay, this is what we assume to rerun things, and only when you see no job running under your name, or to be precise, no job running under your name for this specific installation of Noel, then you can clean everything, so you go under tests, you run make clean, which delete everything that was automatically generated and then you can rerun the test using make condor okay um, let's say that you another uh, way of using the test is is let's say you don't want to run all the tests um, for whatever reason you want just to run one test uh, then this is how you can do it without using condor you go in, in under tests and you run make download. What this does is that prepare the, the directories with the right scripts, the right make file, and, 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 uh, and it download in the software needed to run a test. And then 
you go inside the specific directory of the specific test you want to run. Uh, at this point, because we're not using Condor, you don't have regression underscore a number. Those are automatically generated only when you use Condor. So therefore, you have to go under regression. So you have one single directory called regression. You go inside the test of the, uh, that you want to run. You will run make clean, just in case. Uh, it shouldn't, it's probably not necessary. This is just to make sure if you do it more than once, then you always go to start from a clean state. You go there, you run make clean. You enable Noel, same way, by sourcing the enabled file. And you run make test underscore correctness. And this one will run uh, the, the paralyzing compiler. So in this case, we run the paralyzing compiler as well as other optimizations that the paralyzing compiler rely on. And it, it generates the binary, it, it run it, it check if the output of the binary match the one of the binary generated by just using Clang, so with what we call the baseline, so without any optimization build upon OL. And if the two outputs don't match perfectly bit by bit, the test fail is gonna print on the terminal the test fail, and so now you can debug it. With this, uh, I conclude this talk. I hope I was clear enough, I really hope so, uh, how to use Noel, and I hope you're gonna have fun with it, and it's gonna help you to do research. Uh, uh, let me know how that goes uh, if you want, and uh, have a nice day.